Hey guys, Mike Mutzel here. Just want to show you this FDA disclaimer and get right into it. So translational Nutrimed Minute, what we're going to do is go through some uh, very important clinical trials and, and research papers that have emerged in our industry in the last week. And just want to make a quick note, I have a book coming out, I End Obesity for the Endotoxin Mediated Metabolic Dysfunction. A lot of great information uh, in that book that we will uh, be sharing with you shortly. So let's get into it. Diabetologica, okay. Uh, a new paper, May of 2012, highlighted the historical uh, overview of the increased hormones. And as you know, uh, our small intestine secretes uh, these hormones uh, in response to food intake. And these hormones have a uh, broad effect on appetite, satiety, and systemic insulin response. And we know that these hormones become dysfunctional in individuals that are insulin resistant or obese. And we know that they can be, uh, you know, remedied with uh, various pharmaceuticals, uh, you know, surgical interventions such as bariatric surgery. Uh, the rapid weight loss and metabolic optimization associated with bariatric surgery is largely due to the gut deriving cretin hormones, and also uh, from a nutritional standpoint, we have a lot of ways in which we can modulate this. Um, prebiotics, for example, inulin, arabinoglatin have been shown to modulate the gut derived hormones. Pea protein, in particular, out of a lot of the different proteins available, uh, is the most potent inducer of uh, GLP 1 and CCK. Also, um, probiotics, bifidobacterium, has been shown to increase the number of L cells in the small intestine, which are responsible for synthesizing GLP 1. Now, why is this important for uh, you know clinicians or you know people in general? Well, uh, low-calorie diets are associated with a rapid uh, reduction in the uh, in cretin hormone signaling, particularly CCK and GLP-1. And uh, this was the only study of its kind. This was reported by Rachel Larder in uh, Nature Medicine, May of 2012. And what she talked about is a bunch of different uh, human clinical trials whereby low-calorie diets are associated with weight regain. And one in particular where uh, they measured, the research team measured actually the incretin hormones uh, prior to the diet, during the diet, and one year after. And what they found was that in uh, 36 obese individuals, Okay, and cretin hormone levels were still suppressed one year after the low calorie diet. So this was purported to be the mechanism by which these individuals tended to regain up to 30% of, of the weight that was lost. And so one reason why diets may fail is due to impaired in cretin hormone signaling. I uh, also want to highlight this paper, Current Diabetes Reports. Uh, we tend to think of the comorbidities associated with metabolic dysfunction and obesity as, uh, you know, cardiovascular disease. We tend to think that that's a leading cause of, of mortality in, in these metabolically challenged individuals. But actually, new reports show that uh, cancer may be, um, you know, superseding uh, cardiovascular disease. A 24.5 percent of individuals, Chinese individuals with type 2 diabetes. Uh, the leading cause of mortality is cancer, whereas versus a 23.5%. So we see that inflammation uh, and hyperinsulinemia, hyperglycemia may create the environment uh, that favors cancer. So what can you do about that? A new uh, intervention trial that was pretty interesting. Uh, you know, modest, low-calorie diet, just a little bit of exercise led to statistically significant uh, reductions in body mass index, all metabolic parameters, uh, and specifically some biomarkers related to cancer in postmenopausal obese women, 486 women to be exact in that study. That was conducted here in Seattle at the Fred Hutch Cancer Center Institute. And this was a new mechanism elucidated uh, indicating that resveratrol uh, may optimize metabolic function in a different mechanism than we've previously uh, thought. This mechanism has to do with resveratrol's properties being a phytoestrogen, and as such, resveratrol can activate the estrogen receptor alpha, and through a this uh, Cavillon uh, three mechanism, uh, actually lead to upregulation of the GLUT4 translocation. And if you look here in the visual that circled, GLUT4 is responsible for uh, traveling from the cytosol of cells going to the cell uh, membrane and where insulin will bind and dock to it and enable glucose to uh, come across uh, from the bloodstream uh, into uh, you know cells for mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation and aerobic breakdown of glucose, which is what we want. Now, if you have um, low GLUT4 expression, you can be insulin resistant and so on and so forth. So a new mechanism by which resveratrol improves blood sugar stabilization. Resveratrol is not the only phytochemical that optimizes metabolism. Uh, tangeritin is a uh, citrus bioflavonoid 
And as you know, uh, there's many uh, beneficial properties associated with citrus bioflavonoids, but this one was pretty unique. And uh, tangerine was found to increase GLUT4 expression via an, a different mechanism, not uh, estrogen receptor alpha this time, but adenosine monophosphate kinase, or AMPK, which, as you know, this is the master regulatory switch for activating uh, mitochondrial function, mitochondrial biogenesis, and so on. And so just another mechanism by which a phytochemically rich diet uh, and with a bunch of different colors can lead to enhanced uh, body composition and metabolic function.